Hi there, Tegan Lawson with you at the Car Advice News Desk. Let's take a look at what's making headlines this week. Well, coming up, which manufacturers are tied up in allegations of steel price fixing in Germany? The possible price tag on a hybrid supercar and robotic gloves. First up though, a breath of fresh air. PSA, the parent company of Peugeot, Citroen and DS, has released the latest results from its real-world fuel testing program. 30 core models were put through their paces with an independent testing body and the results were then audited by another independent company. The test involved nearly 100 kilometres of mixed urban, rural and highway driving, with the vehicles carrying passengers and luggage the whole way, even the air conditioning was switched on. Across the Peugeot models tested, which included the familiar 208 and 308, the testing showed differences of between 1.2 and 2.7 litres per 100 kilometres when compared with official numbers. Citroen vehicles tested included the C4 Cactus and the Bolingo, with the results showing a deviation of between 1.5 and 2.6 litres per 100 k's. The DS3 and DS4 results ranged between 1.4 and 1.7 litres per 100 kilometres difference. The next generation Mazda BT50 Ute will be based on the next Isuzu D-Max. Mazda and Isuzu have struck a deal that would effectively mark the end of Mazda's current arrangement with Ford. The collaboration would allow Isuzu to make the D-Max more modern, while Mazda can strengthen its product lineup. German authorities have raided the offices of a number of automotive companies as they investigate allegations of steel price fixing. According to a report with Bloomberg, the German antitrust office confirmed this week that BMW, Mercedes-Benz parent Daimler, Volkswagen, parts supplier Bosch and transmission specialist ZF were raided as part of investigations into an alleged price fixing cartel. If they are found to have been engaging in anti-competitive practices to drive down the price of steel, they could be fined as much as 10% of annual sales. Well, for the next three years, Australia will be home to three Toyota Mirai vehicles. The hydrogen fuel cell powered cars will be joined by a portable refuelling station, given that we don't have the infrastructure to support hydrogen fueled cars. And they'll travel around the country. You might just get to see one. Another section of the Sturt Highway in the Northern Territory is now part of the region's open speed limit zone. The decision by the Northern Territory Government has created a continuous no speed limit stretch of 336 kilometres from just north of Alice Springs to the Ali Kurang Rail overpass. Despite the fact that you could technically drive as fast as you want, with the exception of past roadhouses and through small communities, people are still encouraged to drive to suit conditions and within their own limits. The country Liberals say if they're re-elected later this year, they will continue to expand the open speed limit zone. Jaguar Land Rover's Special Vehicle Operations Division has revealed plans to ramp up output with the aim of launching one new SVO car each year for at least the next four years. It comes after the opening of its new $34 million technical centre in the UK, which includes manufacturing facilities. A fresh-faced Nissan Pathfinder has made its debut in the United States. The 2017 model has slimmer headlights, a revised grille and a new bumper design, while the rear gets a subtly revised look too. The Pathfinder's 3.5-litre V6 engine has also been overhauled, gaining 56% new parts. Lots of changes inside too, including an 8-inch touchscreen, an updated multifunction display and driver assistance features. It's due here in the first half of next year. Well, pricing is yet to be officially confirmed for the Honda NSX, but Car Advice has learned that it could be priced at $388,000 before on-road costs, which would push it up beyond $400,000 on the road. That's not too bad when you consider that other electrically assisted high-end performance cars are up around a cool million dollars. Ferrari LaFerrari, McLaren P1, Porsche 918 Spyder. The hybrid Japanese supercar packs a twin turbocharged 3.5 litre V6 combined with electric motors for a peak output of 427 kilowatts and 646 newton metres. Zero to 100 in around three seconds? Nice. A work in the production line could be the next IT job. General Motors are co-developing robotic gloves that will read what the muscles in your hands are doing and multiply the force. GM is working with BioServo, a Swedish medical technology company, expanding on work previously done by GM and NASA. The glove retains the dexterity of a natural hand but adds the strength of a transformer, pretty much, oh, and it lowers the risk of repetitive stress injuries too. What kid wouldn't want to go to work with their own robot hands when they grow up? Well, you'll find these stories plus more news and reviews at caradvice.com. 
I'll be back with another hit of headlines next week. Until then, remember, if you're planning to turn right at the traffic lights, you know, the ones with no arrow and a right and a left lane, don't wait till the light turns green before you decide to indicate. Have some consideration for your fellow road users.